What is up guys, Evil Duos Arm here, back with another Blade and Soul video. In today's video, we're going to learn everything about Moon Refuge that you could possibly want to know, the new area that was added in Blade and Soul. So Moon Refuge is a solo sort of, but also multiplayer, kind of weird like that, area, where you can go ahead and farm a lot of different endgame items without needing to group up with parties, but grouping up with parties does expedite the process. So this is a great area for solo players if you're looking to gear your character but don't want to deal with the hassle of trying to find raids or trying to find parties for dungeons. Really a nice little addition to the game, although it is very grindy and you're going to be here for quite a while if you want to be picking these items this way. And real quick, before we get started, if you are new to Blade and Soul, just returning to Blade and Soul, just found my channel, or haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing as it does mean a lot to me. Also, there's a whole backlog of content on everything Blade and Soul on the channel, so if you have any questions, you can always look back and check out some of the other videos on the channel. Odds are pretty high that I've made a video about it. So without further ado, let's get into it, and let's get started by talking to the general merchant of the area, Shin He Won. So this lady over here in the corner, right by these little three sets, you got the banker, you got a general weapon merchant, and then you have the general item merchant. This is the one that sells all of the different items in the store. So she has three tabs. You have the exchange tab one, exchange tab two, and exchange tab three. Let's start with exchange tab one. And before we go through all the items on the list here for these exchange tabs, let's talk about the currency that is used here. The currency is Moonlight Buds. Moonlight Buds are obtained from various quests that we'll go over here in a second, but I want to show you the marketplace and the shop first so you get an idea of why you're farming for all these Moonlight Buds. So the very first option that we see here is a Starlight Chest. The Starlight Chest lets you reroll these Moonlight Chests that you get for completing quests in the area, along with some items, the Starlight Powder that you only get four of per day, so you're only going to be able to do this four times. For an increased reward of Moonlight Buds, basically it doubles the efficiency of your grind for those first four chests. Also has a chance to get you 100,000 EXP as well as a 5 gold Moon Refuge Gold Nugget. The next item on the list is the Hongwoon Talisman. This Hongwoon Talisman is the same exact one that you pretty much got for the story, except you can upgrade this one with items instead of using Moonlight Buds. The one you got for completing the story, you need to use Moonlight Buds to upgrade. So it's actually more efficient to just upgrade this one, and it's actually most efficient to pick this item up from Midnight Sky Petal Plains and then just instead use these green Verdant Night Stones that you have a whole boatload of, of sitting in your inventory at this point anyway. The next few items are all upgrade items for your character, immediate upgrade items. We have the Divine Beast Bracelet Chest for 120 Moonlight Buds. This is probably the fastest way to pick this up. I know in my previous first things to do after level 60 video, I neglected to mention that, but this is probably the fastest way to pick it up. If you haven't already gotten it from completing Know That Enemy Part 2, or Dead Refused to Die Part 2, it's escaping me which Part 2 it is, but Part 2 of one of those two quests gives you the Bracelet Chest, or if you need to get another one because you picked the wrong one. Same thing with the Divine Dragon Bracelet and the Refined Tiger Bracelet here that you need to open these chests. Also a lot quicker to pick up right here. This will take you like two days of just running this pretty casually. Next things we have are the Raven King's upgrade material for your class, so a nice thing if you're trying to go with the Raven weapon or the final tier of your Riftwalk and Dawnforge to switch over to the Raven tier. We have Raven King Souls to upgrade your character. And then we have the four Skybreak Spire accessories. So these accessories are the same exact ones you get for completing the raid. And you can get them for 600 Moonlight Buds, which is basically about a week of running this area. So if you don't get your accessories in your first week of Skybreak Spire, come over here and pick them up real easily. The next tab is the Soul Shield Chest tab. Here you can pick up Fallen Around to School Soul Shield pieces, as well as PvP Ivory Beluga Soul Shield pieces. It's an alternate method to pick these up, and if you really want to complete your set or you only need one or two more pieces, this is a viable place to pick them up. Although, if I was a new player, I would be going for these accessories over here first. Also, for a more experienced player that already has those two accessories, the two Skybreak Spire accessories, then this could be a viable option to pick up your Fallen Around to School Soul Shield chest pieces. The final tab is a bunch of exchange items, so black stones for upgrading your weapon, silver scales for upgrading your weapon. These octagonal, heptagonal, and hexagonal gems, or heptagonal gems, I apologize, all of these are non Hong Moon, which means they are a waste of your money. Do not use these, do not get these. Complete waste, you can't upgrade them, so do not even think about buying these. We have Legendary Gem Hammers available for 90, which basically means every two days after you get your Skybreak Spire or your Soul Shield sets that you want from Fallen Around to School over here. After you've got all of that, you can get Legendary Gem Hammers to finish unlocking all of these slots on your weapon. Two days for each of those of running this area, so not too bad. There's Eminence EXP Charms, which are useful for anyone that's under Hongwoon level 12, which is like nobody, so kind of a waste of an item. You then have all of the weapons you need to upgrade your Riftwalk or Dawnforged weapon, the Riftwalk Dawnforged weapon that the story gives you, which starts over here at stage 3. You have all of the items here, all of the weapons that you need to upgrade this weapon all the way up until the stage 9 of it, which lets you transfer over. Let me open this back up to show you. So at stage 9 of Riftwalk or Dawnforged, you transfer to Raven, and then from Raven you go to Aransu. So basically this area has everything you need to get to Raven 9, which is the final stage before you go to Aransu, which is pretty cool. Let's open up the Marchant back again here. 
head back over to the Slax Exchange tab. So right here we have all of the weapons except for the Celestial Basin weapons that you need to get at Celestial Basin, which are the first two, which you can purchase immediately after completing the two quests that I told you to finish in the level 60 video, or for like 5,000 peaches, which is only like an hour of running around Celestial Basin. So basically in this area, these two areas combined, you can have every single weapon you need to upgrade your weapon up to the Raven 9 stage, which is a pretty, pretty cool deal. After that we have the three costumes, but once again, these are more easily obtained from Midnight Sky Petal Plains, so not worth it. So, of all the items here, to just kind of recap what you would want to be getting, if you're a new player, prioritize picking up these accessories right here. If you hover over it, it tells you which build you want to take for which type of character. So, for example, I'm on my Serpent Assassin, so I want the Fighting Spirit, Spy, Greek Spire, Ring Chest, Type 1. It Hover over it, it shows you who it's for, so pretty simple to figure out which ones need it. After that, I'd be going for my Fallen Around to School Soul Shield set. The 8 set of this is really strong and gives a lot of different classes that needed cooldown reduction to make the class really strong. Beyond that, pick up the weapons to upgrade your stuff, and if you have everything you need there, Legendary Gem Hammers to go ahead and unlock all of the sockets on your weapons. If you've got all of that, you pretty much don't have any other reason to be farming in this area. Another thing of note, the items that you got from the story, so the Eternal Hongmoon Heart, that you got for completing the story. If you go to Manage Equipment to level this up, you need 50 Moonlight Buds, so another thing there. And once again, as I already mentioned, the Eternal Hongmoon Talisman also needs 50 Moonlight Buds. So you're gonna need a lot of these friggin' Moonlight Buds if you're a new player. More experienced players, like I said, you've got only those few things to wanna be looking for from this area. Okay, I've covered every single thing in the area to do as far as purchasing. Now let's get into the quests that actually give you Moonlight Buds. All right, so when you first spawn in to Moon Refuge, you're going to want to head over to the left up here, up on this little house where you see this dude named Nikocha. Nikocha is going to give you a quest that gives you four of these items right here, these Starlight Powders. The Starlight Powders, I briefly mentioned at the start, you only get four of these per day. It also gives you three gold, which isn't too bad for the amount of work you have to do. It's pretty easy to do, just kind of time consuming. So pretty easy for a new player to pick up three gold, nice and easy like that, plus 100,000 EXP. So this quest is going to give you those Starlight Powders. The other item that you need are those Moonlight Chests. The Moonlight Chests come from the quests that you see from these guys right here. Here, there's one right here, and there's one right here, and there's one right here. So... You don't actually have to pick up the quest from those dudes though, and you'll see why this is really useful in a second when we start farming and showing you how this works. If you press J on your keyboard and go to the quest letters and scroll down to the very bottom, you're going to see a quest called Zavnar's Seal, or Zavnar's Zeal, there we go, Zavnar's Zeal. This quest is the same quest that you pick up from these dudes, so you can just click the read the letter and pick it up like that. So when you're out farming different things, you're going to accomplish this quest a lot of times while you're accomplishing the other quest, the Midnight Summer Night's Dream, or Mid Bummer Night's Dream, whatever that quest name was, for the Starlight Powders. You're going to accomplish this the Zavnar's Zeal quest several times as well along the way, so that's what makes this useful. After this, you need to decide which one of these four regions you're going to go to. You can either head to the Blightwoods, the Lunar Grove, the Arcane Swamp, or Moontide Bay. So if you're looking for maximum efficiency and fastest clear time, Moontide Bay is probably going to be your best option since there's groups of enemies that spawn in a ring of ten around here. Every one of the other areas has two, three, or four enemies that spawn around like a tree or in a different area. So you can kill them in sort of a group, but Moontide Bay is definitely the fastest because of how many things you have to kill, or how many things you can kill in quick succession. So why am I emphasizing the time to kill, or the speed at which you kill enemies? If you look at the two quests on the side of the screen, Zavnar's Zeal and Mid Bummer Knight's Dream, Zavnar's Zeal requires you to kill a certain number of mobs in each of the different areas on the map. So Moontide Bay, Blightwoods, Lunar Grove, and Arcane Swamp. So if we look at the quests, I'd already told you that Moontide Bay is the quickest, but as you can see, you also have to kill more enemies in that area. Whereas in an area like Arcane Swamp, you only have to kill 15 enemies. So take this into account when you're trying to farm. I'm sure after saying that Moontide Bay is the fastest, a lot of people are going to start going to Moontide Bay, so it's going to kind of clog that area up and it might slow it down. Beyond that, I've also found the Lunar Grove to be pretty quick since you only need 15 enemies and they spawn in groups of 4 around the trees. So you can just go from tree to tree to tree to tree and work your way around there. Additionally, take advantage of the multiple channels that are in this area. If there's a lot of people on channel 1, switch to channel 2. You might find that nobody's there. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and head over to Moontide Bay just to show you how the system works. So it's really not any different in any of the areas. It's just basically where the enemies spawn that dictate uh, how the area is. Also, Mid Bummer Night's Dream requires you to pick up 30 of these items that these things randomly drop. They're random drops, so I've found that you can actually do Zavnar Zeal four times, which is basically what you get from the Mid Bummer Night's Dream, four of the uh, powders. So you can do this four times before you will have completed Zavnar Zeal, or before you've completed Mid Bummer Night's Dream. So basically you get everything that you need to, which is also why it's super important that you press the J key and read the letter instead of walking back and forth. It just speeds things up. 
So I switched up the angle over here of Moontide Bay to kind of show you what it looks like and we actually have somebody down there right now in the first pool. So this area right here is the first pool. The enemies spawn in a ring around that boss and uh, basically you can kill them all in a ring. So we're going to go to the second pool and see if that one is taken. Hopefully it is not taken. So there's the first pool right there and then the second pool is located over here and it looks like there is someone there as well. So we're going to try a channel switch to see if we can get it with nobody around. And... There we go. A full pool. Oh no, somebody's there too. And somebody's there. So then there is the third pool that's located over here. So you have three pools. You've got the one there, one there, and one over here. And this one is completely empty. So you can just run around and kill the enemies here. So you got one enemy, two enemies, three enemies, four. Five, six, seven, and eight. So that is eight enemies that you killed in like less than 30 seconds. So then you just go around and pick up all of your loot along the way that they dropped to complete mid Bummer Night's Dream. And then they all respawn just like that. And you can just rerun the same exact route. So do this over and over. This is the most efficient way that I have found. So you got three pools to try with two channels. If this doesn't work, like I said, Lunar Grove and hovering around the trees is also pretty quick time to clear these. So uh, anyway, we're going to fast forward until the point where we get to almost clearing a Zavnar's Zeal quest so you can see how that works. All right, we only need one more to complete a Zavnar's Zeal, so we're just going to dumpster this guy real quick and then show you how this works. So Zavnar's Zeal is complete. Let's pick up our Mid-Bummer Night Dreams thing. So we got 11 out of 30 of the Mid-Bummer Night's Dreams. So as you can see, it wasn't a complete one-to-one -one drop. So if we click on Zavnar Zeal, we can complete the quest and we get one of these Moonlight Chests. So that's how we do that. Then go ahead and press J on the keyboard and head over to your quest letter. Scroll back down to the bottom. And you will see Zavnar's Zeal is back in there. So go ahead and pick that up. And boom, you're ready to start all over again. So you can go ahead and continue your route. So we're going to do this until a bit Mid-Bummer Night's Dream is over. Um, but yeah, just pick up the things that the guys drop and then complete the Zavnar zeals as often as you can. Make sure you do at least four of them though so you get the maximum use out of those starlight powders that you get from a, bit, a mid bummer night's dream. All right so that marks the completion of both a mid bummer night's dream and Zavnar zeal. Let's just kill this last dude that is attacking me and we're gonna head back over to the met refuge here the moonlight arbor right in the middle so just go ahead and fast travel there to expedite the process. All right, back at the refuge, you can either talk to the dudes to turn in the quests, or you can just run to the merchant and turn in the quests by the quest letter. So just mash F through those, and mash through F through that. So if you go to your inventory, you will see that I have gone ahead and gotten four of the Moonlight Chests, as well as four of the Starlight Powders. So if you are trying to farm Moonlight Buds over and over and over in the same day on the same character, you're going to need to farm Moonlight Chests because you can only get the next part one time per day per character. Um, so if you're trying to farm Moonlight Buds as fast as possible, you're going to want to head over to Moonlight Bay or Moontide Bay, do the laps just like that. It took me 8 minutes to do that, that's how long that clip was, was 8 minutes for 4 chests, I'm doing it solo. If you are in a party, you can farm even more of these at a given time, as long as you're close enough so you're all getting credit for killing the mobs that you're all killing, um, because the mobs are shared because it's like a regular quest, which is why I said this is sort of like a solo player, but also a multiplayer area at the start of the video. Regardless, this is how you farm Moonlight Buds, is via these Moonlight Chests. Now one time per day, after you get these four starlight powders and four moonlight chests from your first uh, couple of minutes here, you can head over to the shop merchant here and trade in for these starlight chests. They cost 10 silver as well as the moonlight chest and starlight powders. Go ahead and click on those, get your maximum, and bring them over here. These, like I said earlier, give you basically twice the number of moonlight buds as the other chests, so it's basically doubling that amount of effort that you put in. It also gives you a chance at moon refuge gold nuggets, which are worth 5 gold and a 100,000 EXP charm. So let's go ahead and open those up so you can see how everything works in those. So as you can see, I got 38 Moonlight Buds and 4 Excellent Hong Moon EXP Charms, so I can throw those on my inventory and storage and stash and all that, and move on with my life. I just want to point out one thing before I forget. The Skybreak Spire accessories down here are bound to account. So if you have a main that's really geared and you're trying to gear an alt, instead of farming it on your alt this area, you can farm these items and trade them over to the alt. So super useful little bit of information right there. Um, I'm glad that I just found that out today. Periodically, you will get a notification on your screen that says the Dragon Stream is open. If you open up your map and you'll look around the map and you'll see these four little nodes here, run to those nodes and run through the door. If you want to get there quickly, you can use the teleport things. They bring you sort of in the vicinity of the location. So we're going to get to one of those locations and show you what happens when you get inside of the spot.
Normally there's not a red orb floating on these circles, but if you click on the orb now that spawns after that notification pops up, it'll take you to go ahead and fight a mini Venom Sky Drake from Skybreak Spire, along with everyone else in the area that has gone ahead and traveled through the portal. The boss himself is not very difficult, but he does have a 10 minute enrage timer, as well as 268 million health, or two, yeah, 268 million health. So you are going to need to bring a good amount of DPS if you want to do this. You can party up with people once you get in here, so if you do see people inside of the area that you want to party up with, go ahead and do that. Uh, I joined a little bit late into this one, so odds of me finding party very low. But basically, all you got to do is kill the boss, and he will drop little pouches like the Celestial Basin bosses drop. Same sort of idea. So boss is about dead, and we're going to pick up the video here. So after the boss dies, he's going to drop a chest. Make sure you don't go through the portal until you grab the chest. The portal will spawn relatively close to the boss, so be careful. But this is the chest he drops. As you can see, it always has, or as far as I know, it always has two of these Moon Refuge pouches. Inside of the Moon Refuge pouches, you have the options to get 3-5 to five Fortune Potions and a Moonlight Bud guaranteed. So if you are farming Moonlight Buds, not the most efficient way. Hey, Spearmints, nice, thank you. So anyway, it has 3-5 to five Fortune Potions guaranteed as well as a Moonlight Bud, so not the most efficient way if you're trying to farm Moonlight Buds since it's only two Moonlight Buds for the kill. Additionally, you have a chance at an excellent Hongmoon EXP charm, the Peculiar Promises treasure chest that has upgrade materials in it. So beyond that, you get into the stuff that's a lot more rare, and I've only seen Silver Scale Fragments across 10 of these pouches uh, one time. Every other time it's been maybe a Hongmoon charm or absolutely nothing. But we have chances at Gilded Square Gems, which are like your top tier gem right now besides the dieted ones, Heptagonal Gems and Octagonal Gems. I don't know if these are the Hongmoon ones because I haven't gotten one yet. If someone knows or in the comment section, go ahead and leave that. Or maybe, hey, I'll get lucky while I'm recording a YouTube video and get one right now and I can tell you. So we're just going to go ahead and pop those open so you can see what's inside of them. And right there, like I said, nothing too special. Silver Scale Fragments and uh, EXP Charm plus two Moonlight Buds. So an interesting thing, if it's up, go for it. You never know what you're going to get. It's always got a chance, but uh, I, I don't think it's a very high odds. So that is what the little Dragon Portal thing, little mini boss thing that spawns in Moon Refuge is. Just to uh, point it out before I actually end the video, uh, I actually just got a Hepta gem chest and they are the normal heptagonal gems that you cannot do anything with. So they're pretty much garbage unless you get the Dyad, or I guess it's an instant upgrade for a new player if you didn't have a heptagonal gem yet, but don't be too concerned about getting these or having to farm for these, they're nothing special. So anyway guys, that is basically it for this video. Hopefully you take full advantage of this area, it's a pretty neat area, you can get a lot of good gear from this, especially if you're a newer player. And it's definitely something that I'll be taking advantage of for gearing my alts. If you did like this video, make sure to leave a like and check out some of the other videos on the channel. I've got a lot of content for Blade and Soul. And if you are not subscribed yet, please consider subscribing because it does mean a lot to me. Thank you so much for watching. As always, guys, I'll see you at the next video. Peace.